self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. So we're trying to protect ourselves. When we sabotage ourselves from reaching our goals because some part of us is trying to protect ourselves from something we're afraid might happen. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. It's your host, Eileen. Have you ever heard of tapping? Well, today's episode introduces us to emotional freedom techniques, EFT, aka tapping. So tapping is a practice that has countless positive benefits, including reducing stress, releasing limiting beliefs, achieving greater success, happiness, and health in life, and more. And studies have actually shown that EFT tapping lowers the stress hormone cortisol more significantly and quickly than traditional talk therapy or resting. So our special guest today is Brad Yates. Brad Yates is known internationally for his creative and often humorous use of emotional freedom techniques. EFT, aka Tapping. Brad is the author of the best-selling children's book, The Wizard's Wish, the co-author of the bestseller, Freedom at Your Fingertips, and a featured expert in the film, The Tapping Solution. He has also been a presenter at a number of events, including Jack Canfield's Breakthrough to Success, has done teleseminars with The Secret Stars, Bob Doyle and Dr. Joe Vitale, and has been heard internationally on a number of internet radio talk shows. Brad also has has over a thousand videos on YouTube that have been viewed over 45 million times. More info is available at tapwithbrad.com. Hello, Brad. Welcome to the Lavender Lifestyle Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm doing great, Eileen. Mean, thanks so much for having me on. Thanks so much for being here. Okay, so let's start with the basics. Tell us what is EFT, what is tapping, and how can it change our life? Yeah, absolutely. So EFT is short for emotional freedom techniques, and uh, but it's a process of tapping with our fingertips on different parts of the face and torso. Uh, and so that's why a lot of us just call it tapping. And for anyone who is new to this, I know that as soon as I said that, you're thinking, what? <laughs> what? Why on earth is he talking about this? So it's based on acupuncture. So for thousands of years in Chinese medicine, they have said there's a flow of energy through the body along these pathways called meridians. And when this energy gets stuck, uh, we don't feel as good as we might. And we, when we don't feel good, we don't think as clearly and we don't make the best choices. And that has all kinds of unfortunate consequences for our lives. So in traditional Chinese medicine, the doctor would stick needles in these key points to stimulate a healthy flow of energy. And now we're just using our fingertips to tap these same points. And this has been used for thousands of years. We now have modern research showing that there's all kinds of scientific evidence for why this works and how this works. And that tapping these key points that are measurable, you can measure the electrical uh, conductivity of these points. And they send calming signals to the brain. So when we feel upset about something, we're able to calm down our nervous system by tapping on these points. And it, you know, it can be used in all kinds of different things, including just being upset about something that's going on in your day, being concerned about the news, or being concerned about you know something going on in your life, or if you want to make some positive changes in your life, you want to get into better health, you want to make more money, you want to be more successful, have better relationships. As human beings, we tend to resist change. <laughs> we, we find it threatening. And so when we try to do something that makes a change in our lives, we have a stress response that unconsciously slows us down. And we sit there and go, oh, gee, I don't know why I'm not exercising. I don't know why I didn't show up on time for that job interview and didn't get that job and all these different things. It's because part of us is trying to protect us from a change that we find threatening. And so the tapping can calm down that fear, calms down that sense of threat so that we have greater freedom to make better choices and get better results in our lives. So the areas that you're tapping, tell us a little bit more about that and, and how and why does it work? And are you tapping the same certain areas? Are there just like, because I know there's like hundreds of meridian points <laughs> in, in acupuncture, there's a lot. So, but are you, yeah, tell us about which ones you choose to tap. Yeah, absolutely. So yes, in uh, if you ever look at a map of uh, meridian points in an acupuncturist's office, yeah, you'll see all kinds of points all over the, the body and there's all these different meridians. So we generally use eight points 
that are along eight different uh, meridians that are used. And there are other tapping protocols that might use other points in different parts of the body. So, you know, when uh, Roger Callahan, the psychologist who first started doing uh, thought field therapy, which has then um, some people adapted that into EFT, he, he found these certain points were effective for what he was working on with his clients. So there are plenty of other places we could tap on the body, but we find that we get great results with these key points. And so these are generally endpoints on particular meridians. And in traditional acupuncture, the meridians relate to different organs in the body, and the different organs tend to relate to different emotions. So in, in thought field therapy, they would focus on particular points in a particular sequence, depending on what the emotional distress was. Uh, Gary Craig, who was Roger Callahan's student, who came along and said, you know, we could simplify this and just tap all eight points in a row, and we still get the same great benefits without having to spend any time trying to figure out which point in which order. Ah, uh, okay. I was always curious about that because I was wondering, is there a reason you do an order? Is there so, so you're saying you're just tapping the same points in the same order, but it, it's hitting all the important, I guess, organs or parts of your, yeah. your body. Exactly. Okay. Okay. That's super interesting. Why don't we shift onto your story, how you got into tapping? How long have you been doing this? <laughs> yeah. How does a grown man find himself tapping on his face for a living? <laughs> uh, so I actually started out as an actor. I uh, had you know, got my degree in theater at UC Irvine. I uh, traveled the world doing theater, doing children's theater, and then I decided it was time to go to Hollywood to be a movie star, as one does. And while I was there, I met a woman, fell in love, and got married. And when our first child was on the way, I thought, I might need a backup job. <laughs> so I saw this ad for hypnotherapy school, and I'd always been fascinated by the power of the mind, and I thought that would be a cool second career. Not exactly the steady paycheck you usually think of in <laughs> terms of a backup job. <laughs> So I started doing that and building a small practice alongside continuing my acting career. And then when our second child was on the way in a couple of years, I realized that as much as I loved acting, personal development was my calling. This was really what I was meant to be here for. And so we, we left Los Angeles, moved to Northern California. And through some other hypnotherapists, I heard about this energy psychology conference where this guy was going to be talking about this tapping process. And I thought, oh, that sounds interesting. And what really sold it for me was the uh, when we were tapping on chocolate cravings. And this was with Gary Craig, the founder of EFT. And he gave everybody a piece of chocolate. And he said, okay, on a scale of zero to 10, how much do you want this chocolate? And I was a bit of a chocoholic at the time. And I thought, uh, eight, nine, can I eat it now? And then we just did a few minutes of tapping. And at the end of that, I could not eat the chocolate. And I did not eat chocolate for two years after that. Now, now don't wow. anyone worry, I, I recovered. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but I thought, wow, this is, this is amazing. Just by tapping these, these stress relief points, my compulsion to eat something that was not healthy for me just went away. Because, you know, we don't eat chocolate because we go, this would be good nutrition for me. This is what my body wants. We do it out of an emotional craving, which often has a physical component to it. But a lot of it is just emotion. We have all these ideas about, well, chocolate reminds me of parties and happiness and, and this kind of thing. So when I'm emotionally not feeling good, then chocolate will help me feel better. And uh, as we tap through whatever stress might be there saying, I need something to make me feel better then we have no compulsion to put something into our body that's going to have uh, you know unfortunate consequences for our health later <laughs> so that wow. was uh, that was my first introduction to EFT and I, after that uh, that conference i in my next few hypnotherapy sessions i thought all right at the very end i'll say to the client here i just you know we have a few more minutes let me try this thing with you this technique that i learned and little by little i started doing more and more tapping until they became you know, full tapping sessions, a little bit of hypnosis at the end. All right, my loves, time for a quick break. Support for today's episode comes from One Skin. 
I think we all know that UV rays can be damaging to your skin and cause premature aging. If you want to hit the undo button on UV-induced aging, say hello to One Skin. One Skin products are powered by the revolutionary OS01 peptide. This proprietary peptide is scientifically proven to target aged cells and reverse the biological age of skin by several years in their groundbreaking research. Wilson and I have both been enjoying their OS1 face product. It's fragrance-free and absorbs quickly into the skin. One Skin is the world's first skin longevity company. They address skin health at the molecular level, targeting the root causes of aging so skin behaves, feels, and appears younger. It's time to get started with your new face, eye, and body routine at a discounted rate today. Get 15% off with the code TLL at oneskin.co. That's 15% off oneskin.co with the code TLL. We only have one body, one skin, and only you can choose to make it better. Age healthy with one skin. I guess what we didn't talk about tapping yet was the things that you say during tapping. Because when people are like, how does it make sense? You're tapping points and you stop. You don't feel like eating chocolate. Tell us what else went into that session. (laughs) (laughs) So when we were doing that particular tapping round, he was, uh, Gary was saying things like, you know, even though I want this chocolate, I choose to love and accept myself. And as we tap to the points, we want that chocolate. It's going to taste so good. It's going to be so satisfying. I really need that. It's going to make me feel so much better. So we're bringing up and giving voice to all the different things going on inside our heads in terms of whatever we might be feeling. Now, great thing about tapping is that it can be very beneficial even if we don't say any words. Okay. You know, sometimes, well, especially because the way that I do it, it's very intuitive improvisational process where I'm saying all kinds of different things. So if someone watches one of my videos, they might say, I can't do EFT. I don't know how to say all those words. I wouldn't know what to say. Well, one, that's why I make the video so you don't have to. <laughs> but but two, you also don't necessarily have to. The, the words help us get in tune with whatever is bothering us. Okay. So if we're really angry at, uh, you know, the, our coworker, Bob, just really messed up on a project and it's going to make so much more work for us. So we're really angry at Bob. So while we're tapping, we might just say this anger at Bob, this anger at Bob, this anger at Bob. We may expand and go, I can't believe he's such an idiot. Now he's going to cause me all this trouble. I'm so upset about the extra time. So we can play with that. But at the same time, that anger that we're feeling in our body, we can just be tapping and we will be down regulating the stress and we'll relieve that. So you're saying when you begin tapping, you're supposed to bring up the the things that are bothering you. So so it's like saying it out loud, bringing it up, and then and then you're like tell us kind of the flow of there. There's a journey, I guess, through through what you say. Yeah. So the basic the basic protocol for EFT is we decide what's bothering us. So say, all right, you know what's bothering me is I'm angry at Bob, and then I check with myself and say, on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being I'm you know, absolutely in a rage, where would I put it? Well, I'm really pissed off. It's about an eight. And then I would also notice, how do I know that? What, what am I feeling in my body? Because we feel things in our body. That's why tapping is so beneficial because it, it gives a, a physical component rather than just talk therapy because mm-hmm. we feel things in our bodies. We don't just sit there totally relaxed and go, gosh, I'm really, really angry at Bob. Wow. It's, so we want to address where it is in our body. So we might say, you know, it's, it's this tension in my shoulders or I get this knot in my stomach. So we're aware of what's bothering us. And so we start by tapping. So we would take the uh, fingertips of our index and middle finger on our dominant hand and tap on the edge of our opposite hand. And that's where we do the setup statement where we say, even though I'm really angry at Bob, even though I'm stressed out, even though I have this headache, whatever it might be, even though I have this problem, I choose to love and accept myself. And we repeat that three times. What we're just doing is stating a level of self-acceptance because very often we, we feel we're not allowed to be upset about anything. So this is just giving ourselves permission to say, yes, I love and accept myself, even though I'm experiencing this distress. Then we go through these eight points, right? The beginning of the eyebrow, and we'd say, all this anger at Bob. Right here at the corner of your eye socket, all this anger at Bob. Right under the middle of your eye. Run under your nose. 
right under your lower lip. And right here where your collarbones just about come together, there's a little bit of a U shape at the base of your throat. And you can tap with all of your fingertips or even make a fist and tap right over there. The next point is about four inches below your armpit. That's right about bra strap level. And I'm sure even the guys can figure out where that is. <laughs> tap in there. And then finally, the top of the head. And so just with all of your fingers tapping around the crown of your head. And uh, at, on each point, we generally tap between five and 10 times. It's not an exact number. If, you know, if whatever phrase you're repeating on each point may be a little bit longer. So if you're saying all this anger at Bob for being such a jerk and messing things up and it's going to cause me all this problem, <laughs> probably going to be more than 10 times. It's not like your body says, oh, shoot, that was more than 10. Now this isn't going to work. <laughs> so it's just a general guideline for it. So right. that's the, the basic protocol. And then you check again after tapping and say, okay, now what does it feel like? Oh, if it was an eight before, it may be down to a zero like that sometimes. Sometimes it may just go from an eight to a 7.75, but any kind of release we get in terms of our stress is beneficial, more yeah. beneficial than we're actually uh, consciously aware of. And there's also this thing that happens um, as we, it's like peeling the layers of the onion so that while we're tapping, we might get in touch with other stuff that we've been um, avoiding. So I might be tapping going this angry Bob, this angry Bob. Oh my God, it's not even about Bob. It's what Bob did reminds me of this thing that Cindy did to me in the third grade. And I never got over that. And now I can be tapping on this anger that I've been holding on to, you know, for decades mm. and clear that out of my body. Wow. Cause that's been causing me problems in all kinds of ways that I may not be aware of for a long time. Wow. When you put it that way, I can see all the levels of how it's it can be so powerful. I guess the first thing is like the self-awareness of your emotions, how it's making your body feel. And then the tapping helps your body calm down. The talking is, it's kind of like talk therapy with yourself, right? You're bringing up your emotions and then that reveals whatever's underneath. Wow. That's amazing. It allows us to look at stuff that we often don't look at. It's like, especially like when you ask the question about the, the setup phrase, and we talk about the, the negative aspect. And so when you first pre present EFT to some people, they go, oh, no, 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 you're saying the negative. You're saying exactly, the thing you're upset yeah. about. That's all wrong. We should always focus on the positive. Okay, if you break your leg and you go to the doctor, do you say, let's talk about my arm. My arm feels <laughs> really, really good. You know, if your dog poops on your carpet, are you going to say, I'm just going to look at the parts of the carpet that are clean? <laughs> you, what you resist persists. Yeah, so you have to look at it. You have to, because it's not a matter of sitting down on your couch and looking at the dog poop and going, oh my God, there's dog poop and just, you know, being stuck in that. It's a matter of saying, there it is. Now I can clean it up. And now I can walk around my living room without worrying about it. If I refuse to look at it, if I refuse to address it, I'm going to step in it and I'm going to spread it around. Plus I'm kidding myself saying, I'm not aware of it. I am not thinking about that pile of poop that is on my, it's like, come on, don't kid yourself. Just say, look at that. But we feel yep. fear in terms of that it's, it's uncomfortable. I don't know what to do with it. So I want to avoid it. But those things that we avoid, we're just kicking it down the road and it's going to cause problems. So the, the tapping also helps us to calm down and go, okay, I feel safe. Let's take a look at that poop. Okay. What do we need to do to clean that up? How do I clean that up? Let's get it done. What am I resisting? What am I worried about? Now I can take care of it and then I can right. move forward. And do you recommend people to speak it out or is it okay to do this in your head as you're tapping? Like if someone's tapping on their own. Yeah, we, we tend to be more emotionally engaged if we say it out loud. It, it helps us. So the more emotionally engaged we are, the more effective the tapping can be. And, and again, tapping is, is effective no matter what because we have uh, scientific research showing that there are all kinds of benefits, both physiological and psychological, to doing this tapping and sending these calming signals to the brain. Uh, our levels of depression go down, our levels of anxiety go down, our levels of happiness tend to go up, our cortisol levels, the stress hormone, go down, our immune system gets boosted. So even if uh, I recommend tapping on a daily basis, whether you need it or not, it's, you can, you can tap while saying affirmations, you can tap silently, you can tap while thinking about your goals, because chances are, if you're not moving towards your goals as fast as you want to, it's because there's resistance. So by tapping, you can be clearing out resistance that you don't even know is there. 
You're just sitting there going, gosh, why didn't I get close to my goals today? Well, tap while you consider that and, and things will come up and, and you set yourself free from that. So, and by saying the words, we, we just tend to be that much more emotionally engaged and have more to, uh, to, to work with. Right. So it's not just about managing emotions. It's also anything in life. If you feel stuck, it's, it, it's just a tool to work through anything that you, you'd want to work through. It's in life, it, it, it's, a, it's a tool for feeling better, doing better, living better. So it's looking at what would make my life better? What might be stopping me? And, and even just at the level of stress relief, most of us are carrying more stress than we're aware of, especially nowadays, because we're all walking around with this device that's constantly right. telling us, here's something else to be upset about. And we just sort of take that for granted, but it has all kinds of unfortunate consequences for us. It causes us to ruminate about things that aren't healthy. It causes us to make choices that are not good for us or other people. And so as we allow ourselves to clear out stress on a more regular basis, there are all kinds of potential benefits. To me, it's, it's energetic hygiene. We have physical yeah. hygiene, like brushing our teeth and taking a shower. And most of us do it before we need it. We don't look at our teeth at night and go, I don't see anything green sticking out between my teeth. I don't need to bother brushing my teeth tonight. We don't wait until people are holding their nose around us and go, oh, that's right, I haven't taken a shower in two weeks. I should probably <laughs> do that. But with stress, most of us don't have a way of dealing with that, or right. at least not a healthy way. Some people have mm -hmm. ways of dealing with it that are, have all kinds of unfortunate consequences. So to do this, just like taking a shower, brushing your teeth, to do some tapping on a daily basis, to just be calming down, the, the, clearing out the stress that you may not even be aware of. Right. How long do you tap for on, and, and do you do it on a daily basis? What is your routine? Yeah, I, it's the first thing I do when I get up in the morning. And it's not that I wake up in a bad mood and say, oh, even though I'm grumpy again today, I choose to let... No, I generally wake up in a good mood, but I, I might uh, tap saying certain affirmations. I might tap while saying certain prayers, like the, the serenity prayer is one of the first things I tap on a regular basis. Not, it's not always, yeah. I, sometimes it's different things. If there's uh, some project coming up that day, I might tap for any possible resistance, you know, just in case there's any part of me that might have some resistance to taking action, any part of me that might have resistance to getting the results. I just choose to be as open as possible to be at my best. So that, you know, it may be a couple, a, a minute or two. It may be longer, just depending on how I feel. Okay. Do you have other positive practices in your everyday routine? Does TAPIC kind of replace certain things for you? Because I know people talk about meditation or journaling and affirmations. There's so many <laughs> things we could do, right? But I, and, and I do all of those, Aileen. I, 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 <laughs> I do journal. Too. I love it all. Yeah. I, I journal. I, I meditate. Okay. I so it doesn't replace it for you. I, I, yeah. No, it's not a replacement. It's the first thing I do because it clears out any resistance to doing those other things. Mm, okay. Puts me in a better place to get more benefit out of those other practices. I, I tap first, then I, I do, you know, visualization of sending loving energy to the world. Um, do some stretching, do some exercise, or do some journaling, do some meditation. But uh, no, I'd, I don't think of tapping as an alternative therapy. I think of it as a complementary technique. It goes along well with with pretty much anything that you might also do. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, so if I, I know a lot of people listening are probably beginners, so what would be your advice? Like the best way for beginners to start, and you know, any any tips, any mistakes they should avoid. It's very hard to get it wrong. So, okay. <laughs> so, so right at the beginning, let me put everyone's mind at ease. You're not going to tap wrong. I uh, don't tap too so hard that it hurts. <laughs> uh, that would that would be unfortunate. But you're you're really not going to get it wrong. And you know the easiest thing is go on YouTube. Uh, I have over a thousand videos there. Yeah. I have lots of colleagues who have a lot of great videos. You know, just like listening to different musicians, some people are going to resonate more with others. So if, uh, if my videos aren't doing it for you, you can go watch somebody else's. But that's the easiest way to start is to just follow along with someone and not be trying to figure it out on your own. As you go through, 
see what, see what comes up. I always encourage people, if you're tapping along and other words are coming to mind, go for it. I'm not monitoring you. I'm not going to say, oh, 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 you didn't say what I said. <laughs> you don't get any relief. It, trust yourself and go, okay, you know what? Actually, I want to I wanna talk about it in this way. And then as, you, as you're uh, feeling comfortable with it, you can find yourself tapping without watching any videos. You know, just tapping. And, and you may find that you just tap one particular point. I'll often just tap the collarbone point or there are um, finger points. I don't, we don't, a lot of us don't use the, the finger points that were used in the original um, version of EFT. Just finding that it's not necessary. We can get the same benefits without um, going through that, the longer process. But tapping the finger points can be done subtly. No one can do it under the table and no one even knows. Yes, hi, I'm talking to you. And at the same time, I'm tapping away the stress that you're causing me. <laughs> <laughs> so there's little ways that we can do that. So just finding opportunities then throughout your day to, to use this, whether you're experiencing some discomfort and you want to clear that out, or you're just thinking, you know what, I'm doing okay right now, but I'm open to the possibility that things could be better. Because there are so many times that I've tapped with folks who would have said, I am feeling great right now. And we do some tapping and they'll say, oh my goodness, I feel even more relaxed. My shoulders feel looser. And it's like, yeah, we're walking around with this ambient stress that we don't even acknowledge. And we have no idea how that might be limiting the quality of our lives and how it might be stopping us from taking positive actions that could make tomorrow even better. Okay. So why don't you tell us your, I mean, what, I don't think you covered this, but what inspired you to start sharing videos in the first place? I know you've been making videos for, I think your oldest YouTube videos probably eight years ago, or, or maybe even before that. Yeah. Right? Uh, 2007. Oh, sorry. Yes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, 16 years I've been doing this. Um, and, uh, well, it takes a while to, to create a thousand videos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Cause back then, was there anyone making videos about tapping? Were you, were you the first? I was not aware of it. I, um, I have a friend named David Childerly in England who I think had a tapping video out before I did. I was not aware of that. YouTube was pretty new. 2007, mm -hmm. you know, YouTube yeah, was only started. a year or two old. So I learned EFT in 2000. I'd started as hypnotherapist back in 96 or 97. In 2000, I learned EFT and was doing that. And I had, you know, this is still, the internet is still relatively new, at, you know, a few years old at this point. So I started putting out some audio recordings that I called e-tappings, were just, just little short tapping rounds that people could download from my website. And, uh, and I wasn't aware of anyone doing that at that point. And then YouTube came along and I thought, hey, wouldn't it be really cool if there was a video that people could, you, could start their day with some tapping to help them have a good day? And, uh, and I'll call it Tap of the Morning. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I just had some fun using my acting background and just, you know, pretending that I'd just woken up and all that. But that was all I intended to do was that one video. I didn't even know how to upload a video. I had to have a friend of mine upload it to YouTube. <laughs> so I, it was like, okay, I've got a video on YouTube. Yay. I'm, I'm part of the, the YouTube thing now. And that was all I intended. And it was like six months later, I thought, you know, I should really have a video for people to end their day. And I'll call it tap of the <laughs> evening. And then I'm done. And then I had another idea. And then another one. And, and now, you know, 16 years later, thousands there's, uh, of videos now. <laughs> there's, there's over, well over a thousand videos. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and still, still a, a thousand other ideas that I've come up with that I have written down. So I have a new one coming out every Monday. Yeah, and, and fortunately, because I had a background as an actor, I was much more comfortable on video than, than some other people might be. But, um, yeah, so it was fun because, you know, I didn't, I, sometimes I say, well, I didn't so much retire from acting uh, other than, um, but now I've written, directed, and starred in over a thousand of my own short films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love that it came organically. Like you weren't trying to make a lot of videos. It's just whenever you had an idea, it came out. Yeah. I think that's really great. It's been a wonderful thing for building my business and getting to go and teach workshops in different parts of the world. I have a couple more European 
events coming up later this year. But it it has ne- no tapping video I've ever put out there has had a, a, a marketing intention. It's always just been, I think this would help somebody. I've got to put that out there. I need to, I need to do the, to make the difference that I can make. And, uh, you know, I think that's been one of the beneficial things is because it's, it's, it's come from that place. And, you know, I, I certainly enjoy the benefits that, that come from it, um, you know, professionally, financially, but still every video, it's never a matter of, okay, what do I think will, uh, and this is, this is not great for anyone who's trying to build a YouTube channel and because they'll tell you, figure out what your audience wants and build the content around those expectations. Like, yeah, I can't do it that way. I've got to, I, I just have to, it's what, what is the, um, the message that I get of, you know, this is, this is what you should put out there. This is what people could use. Yeah. So even today, how do you plan the topic of your videos? Does that inspiration just flow naturally still? Or what is your process? Like, cause you really have a tapping video for so many different scenarios. <laughs> it comes from all kinds of different places. I usually on my morning walk, I'll listen to books on tape. And so I'll be getting new ideas. And every so often I'll go, Oh, that would make a great video. Hey, Siri, send myself an email <laughs> and I'll put that on the list. And um, so I have this, like I said, I've got a list of a thousand videos that I haven't even gotten to yet. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so, so when the time comes where it's like, okay, you know what? Hey, today would be a good day to shoot a video or two. Uh, and I'll look at the list or maybe in that moment, I'll just say, no, here's something that I haven't thought of before that needs to do that. Uh, sometimes because I'm out in some beautiful place, it's like, Hey, this would be a great place to shoot a video. <laughs> Being down at, uh, I was down in, on, on my walk and I was, uh, in the playground and there was nobody at the playground. I was like, Hey, I think I'll shoot a video in the playground. Right. <laughs> so it just, yeah, kind of just whatever, if, if when inspiration and opportunity hit, then I shoot a video and it, it may be related to something that's topical and it may be just something that comes to mind it's like yeah this would be something to benefit folks and sometimes like i it feels so random but i just feel that draw to it it's like all right and I'll, and I'll yeah and yep. i'll shoot a video and go uh, i don't know about that one but hey i'll put it out there and somebody will say this is the video i've waited for this wow. is my favorite video you've made mm. That's really nice. It's reassuring, right? Because you don't, you're not even sure who needs it, but somebody <laughs> needs it. <laughs> exactly. It's just, yeah. I, it's just trusting, trusting. It's mm-hmm. like, hey, there's a reason why I feel called to shoot this right now. Mm, I see. Um, out of all these years teaching tapping, do you have uh, like favorite stories of people whose lives have been changed by tapping? Yeah. I, you know, it's, a growing body of things. And sometimes it's, it's people that I'm working with one-on-one and sometimes it's, uh, just comments that I read in a YouTube video where someone says, you have no idea the difference this made. I was dealing with this problem and I feel so much relief right now. When I do live workshops, not only seeing the things, but sometimes someone will come up to me before the event starts and say, you have no idea what this work has done. Mm and the shifts that have happened, you know, there is someone who is dealing with, uh, some event that, um, you know, family member had something they had done to them 20 years earlier and it was still causing them pain. And after a matter of, you know, 10, 15 minutes of tapping, they were laughing about it. I used to work with this woman who, uh, ran a small company and she had been away for a while and came back and she said, yeah, my staff said, you need to do another session with Brad. Cause when you do, we all make more money. (laughs) You know, I've seen financial benefits like that. Another question that came to mind was you, you talk about how tapping can help people shift so quickly, but is there like, typically when someone's working through something, what maybe they want to heal something from their past, is it, do you encourage people to like continue doing like a session regularly until they feel like they've healed from it? How do, you know, it's not, it's probably not a one-time thing. So what is that process like? The great thing about EFT is that sometimes we get really quick relief and, and, and things can change very fast. The, un- the downside of that is that that's the expectation a lot of people have. So if, right. if they don't feel a, a whole lot better. It's not a magic fix for everything. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. So if it doesn't, mm-hmm. if they, you know, I have a video that, you know, on, on money resistance called tapping for million dollars. And someone said, this didn't work. It's like, because <laughs> you tapped a few times and you didn't suddenly have a million dollars in your bank. Yeah. You might be setting the bar a little high. That was not, there was no promise here that that's the result that you're going to get. And some things might take years, but it's like, hey, if I get relief from this after five years of tapping on this, those five years are going to pass. So five years later, either I'm in a much better place or I'm still where I'm at because the results weren't happening fast enough. You know, uh, it's like taking a vitamin and going, well, I don't feel any different. Obviously that didn't work. Or doing three sit-ups and saying, I don't have a rock hard six pack. Obviously sit-ups don't work. So it does take continued work with a lot of these things. So people often ask, should I just stick with one video, just one tapping subject, or should I um, switch it around? And I will, you know, experiment with it and see what works for you. Because there's all kinds of different things that, um, that could happen there. Some people will prefer to focus on one particular subject. Because so many different issues are interrelated, they're, uh, sometimes tapping on different videos will, uh, will help get some relief. So I may be working on a financial goal and I go and tap on a video about relationships and I might clear up something that helps me in my financial status just because of something that was interrelated. I see. I think you mentioned earlier that you'd like to do a demonstration. I think now would be a great time to to demonstrate and have people follow along the video. If you're listening to the podcast, make sure you check the video on YouTube so you can do this along with us. So, I, I mean, I'll, I'll let you take the lead here. Awesome. Awesome. So, well, what do you think, Ayan? What is there a particular thing that you uh, would love your audience to experience more of that they might not be allowing Maybe let's do one on releasing the fear and resistance towards towards actually going for what you want. For example, those goals that you set for yourself, but you somehow don't take the steps towards that goal. Like for me, it's like writing a book. I that's been a big goal, but for some reason I'm too busy to work on it, right? You there's there's the resistance. Excellent. Let let's do some work on that. So so close your eyes, take a deep breath. And I'll invite everyone, unless you're listening to this in your car, um, <laughs> go ahead and close your eyes, take a deep breath. And now just allowing yourself to be present. Allowing yourself to be aware of what's going on inside. Think about some goal that you have. So this book that you want to have. And imagine yourself having already achieved it. You know, see yourself holding that book or living in that house or looking at your online bank statement and seeing the amount of money you'd like to have in there, whatever that might be. Imagine you already have it. And following your breath through your body, just allow yourself to be aware of any resistance that might be there. It's something that we never allow ourselves to look at. We just fantasize about the goal, but we never ask ourselves, why might I be afraid of it? Why might I resist it? Because the extent to which we don't have what we say we want tends to be the extent to which we're resisting it. And self-sabotage is simply misguided self-love. So we're trying to protect ourselves. When we sabotage ourselves from reaching our goals because some part of us is trying to protect ourselves from something we're afraid might happen. So just notice what you feel physically and what you feel emotionally. Notice where there might be some heaviness, some, some fear some resistance. Notice any thoughts, beliefs, or memories that might come up about why you couldn't or shouldn't reach this goal. What do you think would be the downside? Imagine yourself taking the actions that you know you could take. Those actions that you are comfortable believing would move you in the direction of reaching that goal. See yourself taking that action. And again, following your breath of your body, notice where there might be some resistance. Notice on a scale of zero to 10, how much resistance might be there, either to taking the action or to getting the result. Notice where in your body you might feel that.
take a deep breath. Open your eyes and uh, just tap where I tap. So for the first round, I will mention what points we're tapping on. And then after that point, um, after we get to the top of the head the first time, I'll then move on with each statement, we'll move on to a different point and I'll move on to the eyebrow and then the side of the eye. But rather than going through the whole round, saying the points every time, I'm just going to do that the first time. And for those of you who are just listening without the visual, and you're tapping along, don't worry about whether or not you're on the same point that we are. <laughs> it's okay. It's just not keep a, tapping away. <laughs> you, yeah. You, you can't get it wrong. Even if you just tapped one point, you're going to get benefit. So. Okay, great. So tap in the side of the hand. Even though I'm resisting this goal, I choose to love and accept myself. Even though I'm resisting this goal, I choose to love and honor myself. Even though I'm resisting this goal. And part of me might say, what are you talking about? I have no resistance to this goal. I'm doing everything I can possibly do every day. And maybe not. And even though I might be resisting this goal, I choose to deeply and completely love, honor, and accept myself. And maybe anyone else who's contributed to this resistance. I tap the eyebrow point. All this resistance to this goal side of the eye, all this resistance to this goal, under the eye, all this fear of reaching this goal, under the nose. And part of me might say, under the mouth, I'm not afraid of reaching this goal. Collarbone, I absolutely want to reach this goal. Under the arm. So what's stopping me? Top of the head. If I'm not doing everything I could possibly do, and then now moving through all the points, I'm open to the possibility that there might be some resistance there. I might have this goal up on my vision board. And I get excited when I look at that. And then I don't take action. It's not that I'm bad or stupid. It's not that I am weak or lazy. It's just that some part of me is saying, that's fine, you go ahead and fantasize about this. but it would lead to consequences. And it wouldn't be safe. So we're gonna make sure this never happens. I'm not stupidly avoiding action. I am brilliantly avoiding action. <laughs> I am brilliantly making sure I don't have that book out there. <laughs> I'm avoiding all the feared consequences. It may be a fear of criticism. It may be a fear of judgment. It may be a fear of disappointment. What if it's not as good as I hope it is? What if people don't like what I put out there? Much safer to not find out. My lack of action on my goals 
is an act of self-care. Based on misunderstandings. It's not a matter of now saying to myself, oh yes, I'm protecting myself by avoiding my goals. Let's keep doing that. I'm clearing the fear of reaching my goals. I'm clearing my fears about taking action. All this fear that I won't get it right. All this fear that it won't be perfect. All this fear about how hard it might be. All this fear about what my friends and family might say. How will they relate to me if I'm a best-selling author? They might be jealous. They might expect things from me. There are all kinds of consequences to success. And so my lack of action just means that due to my programming, the consequences of taking action seem more painful than the consequences of not taking action. I already know what it's like to not have a book written. <laughs> so this is familiar. It may not be all that I think I want, but I'm comfortable with this. I've been handling this condition for years. But being a published author, or whatever my goal might be, is unfamiliar. And I'm afraid of the unknown because I'm afraid I couldn't handle it. And I'm clearing that fear. Clearing this fear at a cellular level and all the way back through my past. Back through all the times in my life that I somehow got the message I couldn't handle things because it's not true. I have handled everything that has ever happened in my life. Maybe not always as gracefully as I would have liked, but I handled it. The proof being that I'm here. I can handle taking action. I can handle it if my actions aren't perfect. And I can handle it if I succeed. I can handle getting these results. I can handle reaching my goals. Clearing my doubts about that. It's safe for me to take action. It's safe for me to move forward in body, mind, and spirit. Take a deep breath and let it go. Now with your eyes closed, just notice where you might have been feeling some resistance to taking action. And hopefully that's gone down. You can rate it again on a scale of zero to 10, whatever was stopping you from uh, taking action. And hopefully you can look at some of those actions and say, I'm going to get started on that today. I'm going to do some writing this week or whatever it might be. And as you imagine yourself having reached your goal, hopefully that feels more comfortable too. It even might feel awesome. It's like, wow, I can't wait to get started on this now. 
And also, as I said, the peeling the layers of the onion, you may just be more aware of some of the things that might have been stopping you, some of the fears and doubts that might have been there. And you can go and do some more specific tapping then on those. Maybe a, a memory of something you did well uh, or some goal that you achieved uh, when you were younger and there's some unfortunate consequence. You you won a prize and your best friend didn't talk to you for three weeks or something like that. And somewhere in your memory, you got this message of it's not safe to succeed. So you can then tap specifically on that event and clear that out. Take a deep breath. Open your eyes if you haven't already. And uh, hopefully you feel greater freedom to succeed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for leading that session with us, Brad. I what think are you write in that a typical book? session, <laughs> I know I, <laughs> I, I, I should do a little bit today, <laughs> but I do. Don't, you know, don't shoot on yourself. You said, <laughs> yeah, no, it, it was really nice because, well, clearly you have a natural talent for bringing these thoughts up, even if it's not your situation. But it, I think it helps people, like, for example, when they watch your videos, because certain phrases, it might hit the chord with them, like, oh, that's it. That's what I'm afraid of. And I think that's the the beauty of, of you, your videos. So, yeah. That's my job is to try to leave no stone unturned, is to look around and say, what might be going on? There's a reason why you're stopping yourself. There's a reason why you're staying stuck. Let's explore those reasons. Tapping gives us the, the freedom to do that. It allows us to calm down that nervous system so we're not freaking out as we look at these things. We right. can relax and go, what might it be? Oh, now that I'm looking at that, that's not so bad. You know, it's like, you know, the scene that, like those cartoons about, you see this giant shadow of a monster and then you find out it's just a mouse that the light is shining right. on at a certain angle. Yeah. And this thing is we're looking at these, these shadows and as we go and explore, it's like, oh, Oh, I, I could handle that. <laughs> mm. Yeah. No, that's really helpful. So the phrases, can you reiterate the phrases that you always try to come back to in tapping? Like the one, like I love and accept myself and just the kind of the things that you naturally come back to, the positive, like after you look at the issue, then what do you say? Yeah. Well, and it, and it varies. There are, there are certain phrases that, uh, that I'll bring up, you know, it's like a guitarist having a certain riff that they might use in different songs. So I'll come up there. There may be certain phrases I'll use, like it's not because I'm bad or stupid. It's because I have programming trying to protect myself. Uh, I'll often, I didn't use it in this, in this particular, um, one, but I'll often say things like I'm a magnificent child of the universe, worthy and deserving of the best this world has to offer. And there is nothing that is too good for me. Mm. So that's one of the, my favorite phrases. It didn't didn't quite fit in. I, I never know when right. I start around. When we, when we started this, it's like, right. It's all right, like let's improv. see where it goes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love that. It's fun. And you know, so just just playing with that. And and the thing is, you can't get it wrong. It's it's not. So don't ever tap thinking I need to say the exact right words. That's, that's why I'm able to make so many videos because I don't get stressed out about making sure I say the exact right word. It's like, I'm, I'm just going to play with this and see what comes through. And I could take the exact same subject, you know, what you the, the subject you gave me, and I would start tapping again right now and it'd be completely different. I love that. So it's, it's just allowing right. yourself to explore that. Right. And, and so your advice for people is, is, if they're do, trying to do tapping themselves, coming up with their own phrases, it really is just an exploration, right? Absolutely. Just whatever's coming to mind. You know, why, just ask yourself, why might I be feeling this? Well, how is this, how do I believe this is serving me? Why might I feel it's serving me? And we'll, we'll argue, oh, it's not serving me in any way. You know, I'll say, why, what would happen if you wrote your book? Oh, I'd be so happy and I could be more successful. It's like, hmm. Check again, because if that was really what you believed, you'd had the book written by now, <laughs> and you know, or whatever the goal is. We we sit there and we try to say, no, no, there's no downside. Well, then why aren't you doing it? Yeah. And it's not to blame or shame ourselves. It's like just getting curious. And I love the the Walt Whitman quote: "Be curious, not judgmental." Looking at ourselves and looking at our self sabotage. You know, like I said earlier, self sabotage is simply misguided self love. So. Why might I think that this inaction is serving me? How am I protecting myself? What am I so afraid of? What's the worst thing that could happen? And as we tap, we might see, yeah, that wouldn't be so bad. You know, <laughs> I, I could handle that. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. I love that. Um, okay, so we're nearing the end of today. Brad, do you have any final words of advice that you want to give to our listeners? Just anything that comes to mind? Oh, where do I start? No. <laughs> <laughs> my my favorite closing comment is learning to love yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, there's Lucio Ball said, you got you to gotta start by loving yourself. It, it's so hard to get anything done if you don't do that. And we have so many reasons why we couldn't or shouldn't love ourselves. And when we do, we naturally want to give ourselves a better life. And when we love ourselves more, we see that other people are worthy and deserving of love. And it's much easier for us to love other people. And, um, you know, you can see where that's going to go. Someplace really, really good. <laughs> so, well, please and thank you. And, and so tapping is a great way of clearing out, why couldn't or shouldn't I love myself more? Why shouldn't I recognize how awesome I am? Well, tap, tap to clear that. And, uh, you know, cl- clear away the belief that self-love is arrogant or conceited. No, that's arrogance is, is, is not real self-love. Arrogance, when you're saying I'm better than other people, if you can't see how awesome other people are, then you're not really seeing it in yourself. You're, you're just trying to pretend and you're trying to cover up for some insecurity. Real self-love is not I'm better than anyone else. It's like I'm awesome and you're awesome and, and I want you to see how awesome you are. Right. I love it. And so I hope everyone is inspired to tap away and clear away all the little things that hold you back with the thousands of videos that Brad has on his YouTube. Um, Brad, why don't you tell us where can we find you online? Yeah, thanks. Uh, first place is on my website, tapwithbrad.com. And, and actually, I have a, there's, a, there's a free five-day program there called Tap Into Your Best Self, which is very much about the self-love. So I definitely encourage folks to go. And um, if you go to tapwithbrad.com and you'll see that right at the beginning, there will be a, a link to, um, to get that. And it's a great five-day program of clearing out those reasons why you couldn't or shouldn't feel better about yourself and why you couldn't or shouldn't create for yourself a much better life. And, and then, of course, on YouTube, well over a thousand videos, you know, ranging from three minutes up to, you know, 15, 16 minutes or so. Amazing. We'll have all the links in the show notes. So definitely check him out. Thank you so much, Brad, for being here. Thank you for doing that session with me and just sharing this new tool that can be so helpful for everyone. Well, my pleasure. Uh, Thank you for the opportunity. I love sharing this and thank you for being willing to uh, clear in those blocks to sharing your gifts even further through a book. Yes. Thank you so much. (laughs) 